Back to Simon. The gates fly back. They're on their way, Dubai destination, with the previous experience to call on the first to break in the maroon and white jacket with down the centre Sohaib. Now, interestingly, some of the jockeys aiming to come over towards the stand side. A difference of opinion here. In fact, uh, the others are racing a bit away from that far side fence, so they have their ideas where the best ground is. Dubai destination and Eshrag disputing it on the near side Sohaib in the blue and white jacket of Sheikh Hamdan. These are followed then by Kalamint, just chased along behind them. Out wide at this early stage, Gabor in the black armlet. Snail's castle is handy. Tucked in behind these is Sweet Band with Grampian and Pecan Q and Graft has got a white face against the fence in the blue and grey stripes leaves towards the back gold throat struggling to keep up and also Serious in the rear with Savannah Bay they're past the halfway stage Dubai destination the three to one on favourite disputing the running with Sohaib and these two are a little way clear now of the others Eshrag and uh, Kalamint chasing hard with Grampian but the front two look in a different league to the others at the moment Dubai destination and Sohaib they've had the race to themselves through out as they begin to meet the rising ground Grampian runs on into third place Sweet Band in the orange jacket is also staying on nicely but he gets to work now on Dubai destination and he just produces an extra gear from Sahib as they run inside the final hundred yards and Dubai destination will duly justify long odds on favoritism readily enough Sahib in second nice run from Sweet Band third then Grampian followed home by Savannah Bay and Sirius and then uh, behind those was Gabor uh, next in the field, Gold Quarter, who was staying on, followed by Graft, and uh, then towards the rear, Eshrag and Pecan Q, Snails Castle, and Calamint was eventually the last in. Dubai destination, a warm order this afternoon, as he was at Newbury first time out, and beaten a short head there, and had a race on his hands here with the newcomer Sohaib, one of three for Barry Hills in this race, and this son of King Mambo on the left has run a very promising race here to at least shake up Dubai destination until inside the final furlong. But this uh, very highly regarded David Loder train colt has eventually pulled clear to win comfortably in the end. Just make a note of the third home, Sweet Band, Ed Dunlop's colt, ran a nice race, was staying on strongly in the closing stages and will benefit from a mile in due course. Dubai destination justifying David Loder's confidence and the backers who plunged on it return the three to one on favourite. Beats a very useful maiden, that's Sir Habe, sent off at 15 to two with Sweet Band running a sweet race indeed. Third at a pony 25 to one. And Dubai destination the 14th favourite in 14 runnings to win it. The third to go in at odds on. Trebro 20 years ago and Noble Decree, who went on to be runner up in the 2000 Guineas in 1972, was odds on when winning this. And other notice, notable winners when favourite Al Hareth won this in 95, beat the 2000 Guineas winner Mark of Esteem. The crack horse Roussey or crack miler for Guy Harwood won it in 83. And Troy 23 years ago won this race before later on winning the derbies, all sorts of races that Troy went and won. But this Dubai destination, a 33 to 1 chance before the race for the 2000 Guineas with Victor Chandler. It would be interesting to see if bookmakers shorten him up after that. Jimbo, what do you think? And greatest shock is this a horse, a 2000 Guineas horse. I thought that the inexperience of Sohaib was absolutely vital and crucial for Dubai destination, a fellow and a half out. He knew his business then. Well, I think we've got to go uh, a long way before we start talking guineas, but certainly, uh, guys, uh, a lot of these shape with potential. Simon's mentioned the third home. Uh, we like the eventual runner-up next to the rails in the paddock. And further back, Walter, which we'll go through to in a moment. Serious, number two, is right at the back of the field. You can only see a pale blue cap. He ran nicely, too. Mm, and certainly for a you know, two-year-old having his first run, uh, at this stage, Pat's in a very un unpromising position. And when you see where eventually he finishes, that is definitely one to take note of. And John, how did you, you, you liked very much uh, Sohaib in the paddock, he ran well? He did run well, but remember this was a seven furlong race and he was giving this horse a bit of a run up until the six furlong pole, but you watch Frankie sit still in a minute, this horse still running a little bit green, the favourite, and when he's caught hold of him, he's won nicely, I couldn't see any of these other runners beating him um, later on in the season, even with the benefit of a run. This, uh, this horse on this side, Sohaib, looked the fittest of Barry's three, whereas the horse you were talking about, Sirius, he looked as though he had plenty left in the tank. But this horse, they've had to work today. The ground just beginning to cut off the top. 
but at the end, you know, he's come home with a really good winner. He was three to one on, and that's exactly how he won at the end. Would it worry you, Walter, that he switched his tail when he hit it with a stick? I think that's more, you know, you're through you're more playfulness, more, you're, you're more babies uh, you know, than anything else. And no, I mean, there was a lot to like about when Frankie did, because I wondered you, how much he was sat on there for a little while. And when Frankie picked his whip up and gave him one smack, mm -hmm. I'd have to say, you know, he knuckled down and got down to it well. well done. Frankie the Tory told me the ground riding on the slow side of good. That's basically what most of the other jockeys said, and that is confirming the time, which is three seconds slower than standard. So the rain has got in a little bit, but it should be no excuses today anyway. Just for those of you who might be interested from a point, uh, I mean, personally I think he's got plenty to prove before he's a classic prospect, but he's beautifully bred, he cost a million and a half uh, thousand guineas uh, as a yearling, he's the first foal and his dam, uh, who only ran twice, is a half-sister to two very good Japanese horses, uh, one of which you'll all know, Agnes World, and a very smart sprinter miler called Hishi Akebono, and he is of course by King Mambo, the sire of King's Best, and he's certainly a good-looking colt, just got a nagging doubt myself about his attitude. <laughs>